So if you look right here, you can see the old wood graining, and this would have been, this is, this is obviously not wood, this is, uh, it's painted this lighter color, and then this pattern here is, is printed on top of it. And the dash is more of a burl type of a pattern, and I don't really know how well that'll come up. Um, this is on the, the black car. So obviously that's kind of a touch that you would like to have on the car. I think it really adds a lot. Man, what the hell is that thing? So these are what are called wood graining plates. And if you've never seen them before, well, neither have I. I ended up chatting with this guy who had a 33 Buick. And he asked me if uh, I needed wood graining plates. So we made a deal. We got these plates. And... Um, wants to jump into the shot. I actually don't know why there's two of these. These are the burl for the dash. And this one over here is, um, this is the window trim. So this goes around all of the window trims for, I don't know, I think there's eight trims in total. And then here we have, um, this is the roller. It's like a spongy, rubbery type of thing and there's the squeegee for the plate down in there and there's a handle for this. What you would do is you would paint the trim um, like a lighter brown color and then you would squeegee these plates with ink and then you would take this and you would roll it across and then that pattern, that ink pattern, would transfer onto here because this is raised, slightly raised. So you would transfer that pattern onto here and then you would bring this over to your part and then you would transfer the ink that's on here onto your final part. And um, I'll show it when I do it or I'll, I'll show me attempting to do it anyway. But um, I thought that was kind of interesting and, and they're in beautiful condition. He gave me a great deal on them. So we're happy to have that. And um, I don't know how hard it's going to be. It kind of looks like it's going to be fun, but it also could. Next update. The Bluick is on the road. I'll have to have my mechanic look at that. Why? Well, why not? His cousin Susie always says this isn't dress rehearsal. And um, what better way to make sure that you get it on the road than to put it on the road? Um, I sold my truck, and I had my lucky license plate. I didn't want to give them up. That's not close to being on the road. It's not close to being road ready, but it is going to happen. So believe it or not, you could legally drive this car down the road. Paint. Let's talk paint. I've been thinking about this hard for a while, and, you know... It's grown on me. I do like blue. I'd say blue is probably my color. I, I just kind of dig it. That said, I do kind of feel like the bluick has kind of taken on a life of its own. You know, if, I feel like if you change the color, it just wouldn't be the bluick anymore. And, you know, it just, it's kind of one of those things. The car is what it is. I'm not going for perfection on this thing. I, I think it kind of tells an interesting story. And I feel like if you go and just change everything about it you're kind of burying that story and i think the story is kind of interesting especially now that you know there's a bunch of videos up about this thing i think it ties it all together if you just kind of stick with what the car is that's just this specific car so i have gone around and picked up rattle cans of paint and you know that was something i got right there i actually really like that to be honest you would really want that underneath so that's where it gets problematic. It kind of almost works there, but that was actually a lot of screwing around to get that effect. 
where it looks like the, the top paint is wearing off and you're worn down to the slightly different tone underneath. But the problem is, is you know, that there's rust that needs to be stopped. So, you know, that's a, that's a prime and, and paint kind of thing. You know, all that said, I had a color matched. I really did. I went to the place. I took off one of the louvers for the, uh, one of the hood vents and they color matched it for me. And here we go, that's all it takes to paint a Bluick. Now this is not gonna be a full paint job type of deal. This is just touch up. Let's go through this stuff quick. The color turned out to be called Alaskan Blue. Um, this is the paint right here. Single stage acrylic. This is the sealer that goes with that. And then what I did was I picked up an epoxy primer for the bare metal. So two coats of that, a little bit of filler if it needs it somewhere. If it needs filler, I guess you put another coat of that on. And then you come over, you put your sealer up on top of that, and then you go down to your, your single stage uh, activator for the epoxy primer. And this is just some hardener for the paint. And of course, we need some reducer. And can't forget the prep ball. And they threw in a free tap cloth. Wasn't that nice of them? So all this stuff, you know, it was free. They, they went in the store and I told them what I was doing. And they said, oh, you can just have all the stuff. It's no charge. And um, if you believe that, I got a bunch of other stuff for sale you might be interested in. Oh, she's dirty. I think you did a pretty good job. You tell me. Definitely, so definitely blendable, whatever. I told the guy, don't go crazy. Just do the best you can do. If it's a little bit off, I'm kind of, that's good. I, you know, I, I don't want it to be perfect. I got this thing where I think this car is a little bit more interesting if it's a little bit rough and tumble looking. And, and here's the thing. You see a lot of antique cars around. Most of them are perfect. You don't see a lot of rough around the edges antique cars around. I just think it's it's kind of neat. Like, you know, you see rough around the edges rat rods and, you know, 40s, 50s cars, but not 30s cars. I think there's something kind of interesting about the car. Just, um, it's probably going to drive people nuts. Mm -hmm.